this tutorial I will show how to tie the single hook assist hook uh, for spinning lures like uh, plugs or even spoons you can use them as well uh, the list of the items that we'll be needing is right here in front of you so the flying line packing 30 pound I have 20 pound that's plenty enough obviously for the trout fishing if you would like to make one for salmon fishing then I guess I would suggest uh, bigger hooks and stronger backing line then obviously the hooks number eight match hooks very sharp those uh, are well much to five six centimeters even four centimeters minnow are they matching nicely we will need our uh, fly tying thread in fluo colors white one black one high vis in my opinion for trout fishing is always fine so i'm using a uh, fluo orange unitrate 8 pole and then super glue to finish it uh, initially for the initial finishing securing it strongly on the hook whip finisher uh, small split rings or whatever size split rings you're planning to use uh, for the loo that you'll be making those hooks for i find out that is easier to tie it already with the split ring on instead of try to open the split ring and put it in the loop because it might be catching in the fibers of this line and then it's fraying it and obviously that might also result in small uh, damages and weaker uh, final product and obviously sharp scissors and I'll be using also this little uh, this is like a little metal stick to apply the super glue on the final threads of this hook so you don't apply too much directly from the bottom so next i'll be already changing the camera angle into my well of course you will need also a fly tying vise just not showing here on the picture and you can start it if you don't have a fly tying vise i guess a regular small vise bench vise would also work uh, for hooks that are like size 8 size 6 i don't see the problem with that okay what i like to start which is optional to be honest but in my opinion gives a greater freedom and flexibility of this loop that we will be creating from our uh, fly line backing is to actually chop off this flat part of the hook or if you would have a hook with the eye i would actually chop off the eye so this is what we're gonna start from uh, with the regular uh, wire cutters And now you will start attaching the thread to your hook shank. Nice touching turns. And then cut the tug end off. leave it at the middle of the shank now we will need to cut around five centimeters or two inches of this let's attach it on top of the shank nothing but cannot do this any differently because if I keep the camera on the other side it's constantly losing the focus so only a few turns leave it loose and now pull the cord secure it with the strong touching wraps tying thread all the way 
to where you end with the base. Now we need to flip the hook if you have a rotary tying vise just flip it I don't have it so I have to detach it carefully twist it and install it like so and now as I mentioned at that point I already like to add the split ring to the to the loop so that's what we're gonna do right now it is a fiddly process little tweezers very helpful and now the ideal length of this loop is around two maximum three mil but I wouldn't go less than two because greater flexibility of this loop more fish you will lose but then again if you do it too long your hook might be catching each other your belly hook and your end hook so again same as before we're doing light securing with the tying thread let's say in three points position it nicely on top cut the tag end off like so position again nicely and secure with the touching turns tying thread all the way to where you started you don't want this white to show through and if you finish it now so use your whipping tool whip finisher Or you can do some half itches as well and chop off the tag and close. Now we need to secure it with the super glue because that's obviously what gives us all the strength that it will remain on the hook instead of just slide down. So as I mentioned I'm not gonna put the super glue directly from the bottle because you could easily overdose it what I will do instead is dump a little drop of it on the piece of paper and now carefully carefully apply it only to the tying thread and this is actually crucial that you're doing so without soaking the loop with the super glue because the loop must remain flexible this is the whole advantage of this hook over the regular single inline eye spinning hook that when the trout twisting and turning during the fight on the on the regular hook it actually creates the leverage between the hook eye split ring and the attachment point of your lure and you can use this leverage to get rid of the hook this here sorry here the flexibility it allows to twist it together with the with the fish like so and you cannot create this leverage and believe me you're really losing much less fishes a trout especially using this flexible setup so final move now is to apply some sort of clear coat on this uh, thread wraps either way if you have uh, uv curing resin you can just apply it hit it with your uh, uv torch and then you're done good to go unfortunately i don't have that luxury so what i'm gonna do just mix some regular two-part epoxy that i'm using for the clear coat go upstairs when i have my uh, lure drying rack 
I put all the hooks that I pre-tied today there apply the clear coat I'll show you obviously this in a moment in a this will be like very fiddly process with this all crazy setup here but I hope I'll be able to show it somehow and in the process not screw it up the whole application Focus. Never mind. Catch it when we're on the second side. In it. Like so. Well, guys, you don't touch the focus, but anyway, you get the idea. So I will remove this mess and I will just finish epoxying, then I'll show you that. Final shot. Okay guys, so the whole assembly is spinning like so, this is how my loose drying uh, rack looks like, those are secured nicely here, and tomorrow I'll show you the final effect, I'll also show you the little helper here, what have you done, do you know anything about it? Hmm? Pixel? Pixel is little helper. Meet Pixel guys. Okay, okay guys. So, we're ready and we're back with the final product. Waited two days actually. Yesterday I didn't feel like shooting the rest of the video. And what we will probably add at the end of the video is also like the braking strain test. And as you can see it is already put back into my uh, twitching trout balsaminos this is the final product as you can see that's how it looks so i hope this video was helpful for you and you will be in the future tying your own hooks like that i know that there are several craftsmen that are selling those products so you can also purchase if you don't feel like tying it yourself or if you don't think like you don't have any uh, sufficient skills of fly tire but as you saw on the video it's really not that difficult and either way you might use those tied by yourself which obviously will give you more satisfaction or you might just buy from whoever is selling them around so so i see you in the next video i uh, hope uh, you can subscribe to the channel the video should be coming now once a week uh, mostly all those tutorials i obviously will show as well uh, how to do how i'm making how to do it those uh, balsaminos or different types of the fishing lures so see you around such a jerk custom lures from here saying bye i hope you enjoy it take care and stay safe in those crazy times Okay guys, so strangely, it actually broke at much lower strength than I expected. The highest value we recorded, as you could see on the video, was 6.72 pound. So this is merely 3 kilograms. I mean, obviously, there will be amortization provided by by your uh, by your rod bend of your rod some stretch on the line if you're fishing braid still there will be the little stretch of the fluorocarbon leader and obviously no one sets the drag for three kilo uh, when goes trout fishing but as we see 
there is a bend in the in the hook itself so this wouldn't let go still but what it broke it's the it's the the cord the fly line backing which should have been rated for 20 pounds and it broke at nearly seven so obviously if we upsize this element which won't affect that much because 30 40 pound one still would be pretty supple and and uh, will work as it should so anyway very interesting finding i'll be fishing those hooks anyway because when i go trout fishing i'm using like four pound uh, five pound leader so i'm not uh, afraid anyway that any of this uh, will happen in the real life situation but of course if you're going with the heavier tackle tackles for big trout or salmon as i mentioned then definitely worth to put this uh, fly line backing at at least 40 or 50 pound breaking string okay so that concludes the video very interesting finding actually much less than i expected but anyway i shouldn't uh, shouldn't do anything bad to fishability of those of those hooks and by the way i used the one that actually tied three days ago so as you can see like the epoxy and super glue part there is not a chance in the world that this will let go even if you clip this flat part of the hook and the eye of the hook so it is only uh, tied on the shank of the hook this grips actually very well the weak point is still the hook or the cordage depending which one you use